And um, I, this is Carla Bush. She's our uh, extension agent. And anytime you need to reference anything, you can call her. And I'll call her. <laughs> and I'm Pam Sites, and I'll be your trainer this morning. She's going to be my puppet because, as you can see, I can't lift things, but I, I had shoulder surgery three weeks ago. So, But uh, the first slide was to ask me about FCE. And FCE is a um, family and community education. It is a, a club that uh, does um, works together to build strong families and communities. And if you have any questions about it or anything and would like to join, uh, we accept men and women. So um, you can talk to us later about that. Next is talks about we are um, Rutherford County Extension, and we are part of UT, um, University of Tennessee, and TSU. Our okay, next picture, this picture is tomatoes that were taken at the Overton County Tomatoes from the 2016 mark. I posted this picture on uh, Facebook because I said these were intimidatingly gorgeous supermodel tomatoes. They are. And they are here at this market and from the Overton County. Uh, their name escapes me, but they these are here. Okay. There's lots of varieties of tomatoes, um, and which one you like is your preference. Um, so the, the, they've got all kinds of them out there. There's heirloom tomatoes. There's um, what do you call them? Um, where they cross bread and stuff, where they hybrid tomatoes and stuff. So it just depends upon what you want to, to can. Um, the art of canning is, um, and conserving food, is an invaluable cooking skill, often passed down from generation to the next. And for those that who have never canned, um, this is your chance to learn, and it's never too late to learn. Simply put, canning is one step beyond cooking. It's a method that applies heat to food in a closed glass home canning jar to stop the natural spoilage by removing air from the jar to create a seal. There are two home canning methods. The first one is water bath canning, which we're going to be demonstrating a little bit today, and the other is pressure canning. When you can, there's three steps to follow. You're going to select your recipe and prepare it. Then you're going to wash your jars and lids and get all your equipment ready. And then you're going to preserve. <laughs> That's what happens when a font doesn't translate on a PowerPoint. <laughs> but if you speak this font, it would say step one. Right, there you go. Step one, pick your recipe. Um, start with a good recipe. And what a good recipe is, is it needs to be more than just good flavor and to be considered for safe home cook Annie. Um, you have to use one that's been tested to um, for accurate processing, uh, temperature, time, and the ingredients and the jar size. So it makes a difference of what you put in that jar and what size the jar is for the processing time and how your product's going to come out. Because if you use old recipes, um, and you may have a favorite one, but try to um, match it up with a new one so that you get your proportions correctly. Because it does make a difference in the canning process and how long you, you do it in that. So. Step two, translate it. Um, prepare the recipe. What you want to do is pre read the recipe completely through and make it clear and have a clear understanding of what is going, what you're going to be doing. Um, set aside enough time to do the complete processing. That includes um, the, making the recipe, boiling the water, all kinds of stuff. We've been here since about 7:30, getting the, some of the water hot and that. So. You've got to prepare the process without interruption. Then you're going to assemble your equipment. So what kind of equipment do we need for water bath? Now this is um, some of the equipment you use for both water bath and um, pressure canning. And some of it includes approved canning jars. They come in various sizes. This is the wide mouth uh, pint. This is the small mouth pint. I didn't bring any good pork ones. 
This is a quart jar that is a mason jar. It's an approved jar, but there's a slight problem with it. If you were to get your two-piece lids, which we'll talk about a little bit, it's not going to sit on there. It's not going to seal. So you, this one, even though it's an improved mason jar and would withstand the pressure, it's not a, a good candy jar. This one, um, and these are um, the spaghetti sauce, the classic spaghetti sauce that you get in. I think they changed their lids a little because this one now does work. However, this jar is not a quart size jar. If you do get any of these and you do use and process it as a quart jar, because it's almost a quart. Um, a jar funnel. You'll need a jar funnel, preferably a plastic one, or the, this is the new one out on the market for the ball. It folds up nicely. Takes up a little less space. A jar lifter. <laughs> a wand or bubbler. Now these can all be bought in a kit and the other end of the headspace. Now for years I didn't have that as a headspace. The only thing I used when I bought my kit, um, it had something like this in it. So that's perfect. It just doesn't have the, the headspace side. But I used, anybody know what this is? <laughs> you didn't want to use a plastic or rubber thing because if you use metal, you might chip your jar. If you chip your jar, you're not going to have this seal. Um, next one is the bands and the lids, and we'll go into those in a little bit. Um, and it's the two parts of the band and the lids. Um, clean claws, clean claws, and dish towels. Need a timer for processing the correct time. Hot pads are always good to have because you don't burn your fingers. Um, knives and cutting boards are always good to have. And you want sharp, sharp knives. Um, you cut yourself less with a sharp knife. Um, and then the canners. There's hot water bath canner. <laughs> With a hot water bath canner, what you want is you're going to have a lid, and that's used during the whole hot water processing. You also have a rack, and you have the base. With the hot water bath canner, you may use a nice heavy stock pot, and then you can put rings in the bottom if you don't have a rack and you can use it. We're going to use what is known as my blancher uh, today because I didn't want to heat up a big pot of water. Um, so, and I have a rack for it. Um, which you can, you can buy at various places. Um, I don't know. F-A-C-O-R. A car is where I got the kit that had the, the little rack in it. Um, but just putting the, the bands in the bottom because you want the jars to be off the, off the bottom. Um, the pressure canner. Now, I did not bring mine um, this morning because I didn't want to make my husband work too hard. <laughs> but you will again have a lid, and you'll have a base, and you'll have a rack. And you can see the rack looks different. Um, you'll have a dial canner that has the dial on it that gives you pressure in that. It also has a little bit um, pipe exit for um, exhausting the steam. This one has what's called the rocker on it, and the rocker will sit there and just jiggle, um, and it, it comes in 5, 10, and 15 pounds, um, and then you'll need those different measurements when you are canning. And again, they both have a base. So, um, any questions on either can? The pressure canner's lid seals and it has a gasket, so that's another difference versus this lid. And, uh, and the safety valve. A lot of people uh, are afraid of the pressure canners because they've heard in the past they exploded, but now they're made with safety valve. With the safety valve. Um, 
The other thing is on, the, on a pressure canner is that you have to have the dial tested every year to make sure it's calibrated correctly. And Carla is a certified, um, if you just bring your lid in, she will test it for you. Okay. Do you need to replace the rubber around that every so often? Every so often, yes. yes. Yeah, if it gets dry rotted or cracked and it's not because that would prevent a seal at proper pressure from um, building and maintaining. Yes. So yes. And, and um, the hardware stores usually carry the um, this. You can replace just about any of the gauge. You can replace your uh, by the the vent pipe um, thing or the weighted gauge, or you can replace. It's usually at a hardware store that carries those parts. Which canner do I use when? Okay, this is really kind of important. Um, you're going to use your high acid ones for your hot water bath. Okay, use your low acid for your pressure can, so that you can kill the bacteria, the yeast, and the molds and everything. So you've got um, on the strong acid side, you have usually your your fruits and your vegetables, as such as. Um, uh, sauerkraut, something that's been fermented. Um, mostly your fruits. Tomatoes is a fruit. So your pressure canners are going to be your green beans and your meats, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, lima beans, all that. I, I've not done any meats before. I've done um, mostly um, green beans and, and tomatoes, especially in jellies and jams. Which are probably the most common things that yeah. she mentioned. Tomatoes and green beans. If anyone cans, they usually do tomatoes, and if they have pressure canner, green beans and jams and jellies. Which jams and jellies are in the hot water? Yes. <laughs> All right. Again, your jars. You're going to use approved jars. Um, these are older jars. You don't want to use the lids to those. If you still have some of the jars, though. The, the old blue jar, as long as it has a screw band on it, you might want to, you can use it, but you might want to think about it because before they came out, what, two years ago, three years ago, with the color again, that celebrated their 100th year old, they are 100 years old. Now, they will still withstand the heat, and I've used them. Um, I've got some from my husband's mother, and I have used them before, and they still are good. It's just that they're 100 years old, and... Um, I have seen them at guard sales, and, and at, or not guard sales, they have antique stores for $35. So. <laughs> you have to be sure that they're not shipped. They're not shipped yeah, around. I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> okay. I'm getting there. <laughs> All right. What are you going to look for in a jar? What are you looking for? You're going to hold it up, make sure there's no cracks or anything in the jar itself. Then you're going to slot, like, run your finger around the edge. Now, you're looking for nicks, cracks, whatever. You want that to be smooth so that your seal um, will seal. When you're washing your jars, um, you want to wash them in hot soapy water. You can use a nylon type brush. You don't want to use a metal brush because that can scratch the inside of the jar. And um, so you want to stay away from anything that's going to be abrasive. You can wash and keep them warm in your um, dishwasher. Um, and it is recommended that you heat your jar so that when you put your hot stuff in it, it doesn't have a thermal um, shock to it. So since we're gonna use this clean wash jar, I'm gonna stick it in my hot water here so that it'll be ready for us when we get ready to put our canning things in. I'm so independent. I know you are. I'm just here to do what she tells me to do. Yes. Get them hot or keep them yes. warm? Yes. 
You can, you can keep them in the oven. However, do not can in the oven. I have a friend that I've tried to tell for years now that the canning in an oven is not a safe procedure. So after you take it out of the water, you can put it on like a cookie sheet and put it in the oven? But yes. you say don't use it from that? You can use it for that. That's keeping the jar hot so it doesn't have the thermal shock. Okay. But once you put your product in, you can use your water bath or your pressure can. That's I do the oven because you can put so many in there at one time. Right. And they maintain the heat too. So. Um, any other questions on the jars? You want to use a two-piece metal band. This is the band. This is the lid. You can use this band over and over again. This is a one-time use thing. Now, I usually, one time. Drive that home, people. One time. One time. I usually write my product and the date on my thing so I know that I've used it. However, I have discovered in the last couple of years teaching these classes, that you can tell this one has been used because it's got an indentation where my jar has been sealed. The, uh, I have a question about lids. <laughs> On the lids, have you ever used, the, I think they're called the tackler, the white? The reusable plastic ones to use those? Only for storing things in, they're, like. They're a flat disc like that. No. You haven't used those? No, yet? and I, I have not, any of our um, research based information has not approved those. But you know, I was going to mention that, right? No. The National Center for Food Preservation hasn't tested those yet. So, okay. as we would say, the jury is still so, out. Okay. So, oh, that's so. Um, the co uh, ceiling compound, which is around the rim, which is what I'm uh, showing you now, um, has changed over the years. So read your box on how to heat those lids. You used to have to boil them. Now my newer lids do not have to be boiled. They just have to be in place in hot water for, um, after they're washed in that. So it kept hot. Um, so. Like this, it lasts you a long time. So, um, 
it's not that much more expensive if it is, if it is expensive. Uh, you know, salt's not your preservative. You're processing and um, the, um, the make more citric acid. And citric acid is nothing more than um, vitamin C. And some people say, oh, the lemon juice or the vinegar or the citric acid makes it taste off. Put a little sugar in it. I know we don't recommend sugar a lot, but that will offset your, your taste. How much to buy? Um, in your books, most of the books um, that we use, there are charts that tell you how many pounds of this um, will make that. So um, just a quick reference, 23 pounds of tomatoes will yield about seven quarts of the crushed tomatoes or tomato juice, and 21 pounds will do the whole or the half once. The kind of preference is your preference though. I mean, um, there are, you can go out on the internet and see what the main names of them. And I know Martha Stewart had, um, when I was looking, Martha Stewart had a, a list of different types of tomatoes, and she said this was better for this and this was better for that. But, this photo was taken at um, the 2015 farm visit to Gunter Farm. And those are beautiful tomatoes too. Yeah. He's a vendor here. When our agents go out to the farm, I'll make sure the producers Is there a particular variety that y'all think is best? I don't recommend one over the other because it's all your preference. It's all your your taste. I, I agree. There are some you want to stay away from. Uh, however, on canning. Which ones would you say? The purple Cherokee, you do not want to can that purple Cherokee. It's an eating tomato, it's not a canning tomato. Purple Cherokee is what he said. Okay. okay. I, think, away, I don't use that one, so I Stay away from think. canning that one. It's an eating okay. tomato, not a canning tomato. Okay. Okay. Then your, your master gardeners might uh, be a good reference for uh, that kind of information. I'm not a master gardener. The vendors as well, they can, I mean, they can tell you the ones that sell the most for canning, but um, are you a master gardener? I was just no. just canner. Oh. 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 Yeah. I, I know Rome is one that, that a lot of people recommend. Um, it is preference. Yeah, it, it is it is preference. But, um, Any questions about these two things? We're going to demonstrate raw pack today. We may just talk about it if we keep through the break. <laughs> we'll pretend like we're doing it. Yeah. All right, act it out. Now, how we're going to do it is we're going to fill the jar using a non-metallic funnel. And we're going to fill the jars and we're going to leave the correct head space. What is head space? Anybody know? Teach. <laughs> just know it's supposed to be an inch, isn't it? It depends. It depends on your product. Um, the new kits, the new bubblers, um, have on there the inch, the 
half, three quarter, and, and the whole inch. Well, a quarter inch. Yeah, quarter, half, three quarter. <laughs> um, you tell I don't use this very often. I use it. <laughs> Jams and jellies usually have the quarter inch. Your uh, vegetables, so you like your tomatoes, um, are usually going to have uh, the half inch. Now, you don't have to have one of these to know that. You do what I do. On the bottom here is a ring. On the next line is a ring. And as you screw it around, it comes up to another ring. That's your inch, the bottom one. Your half inch is halfway around. And your quarter inch is the top. Is that what you do? And, Not your head. Yeah. And, that, and that's, that's, that's how I learned. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I use. <laughs> so. Well, I teach my kids. The little thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and what it is, it's, it's how far from the edge of your rim to the product. So that would be the quarter. That would be the half, three quarter, and the inch. Today, our tomatoes are going to use the half inch. <coughs> We're going to measure, uh, measure. Oh, there. It shows you how to measure the head, set, the head space. Then we're going to remove the bubbles. We're going to clean the rim, and we're going to set the bands and seals. Okay. Any questions on what I've talked about so far? Now, these tomatoes that you're doing, they're just completely raw. They're just, you just washed them, and did you peel them? No, not yet. Yet. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to get the water. These are from the <laughs> They have a lot of canning tomatoes there. That's why I'm trying to get the water to boil. It's steamy. Last year, my husband planted tomato plants, and you know, a few came in at a time, and I said, this year, I'm just going to get my tomatoes in the market so I can plan a weekend, because it does take time. And I know canning can be intimidating because it takes all this stuff, but once you've got the stuff and you can plant it, I, that's why I'm a big advocate for coming here to the market, getting the tomatoes, and just knocking it out in one day. So. Now, my recommendation on canning is it is a process that you're going to take all day long. So you don't want to buy five bushel of tomatoes because you'll be doing it until midnight <laughs> or late. Oh and um, I know my, Dale's mother, my husband, she used to can them all day long, but since she had help, she had, there were three girls in the family and his grandmother lived right next door. So between all of them, it, and it is fun to get a group together and do canning. Sometimes though, it's like, to me, the group just um, interferes with what my thinking process is. <laughs> so I prefer doing it by myself. <laughs> All right. Oil and water processing. We're gonna fill the jars on an elevated rack, which is, you saw me put the rack in here. You're going to lower the rack in the simmering water. Now, if you're using the rings on the bottom and you don't have a rack, you're going to fill all your jars and put them in at one, at one time. You don't want to put them in there as you're filling them. You want to get them all in there and then um, lower the rack. Um, the jars should be covered with one to two inches of water. Um, and if you have to, you can add more water. So I have an electric tea kettle, which takes, um, so I don't have to be using another burner to do that. Brilliant. That little tip right here. And, and they, they aren't that expensive. A little, and that, that's over on my other side of the kitchen, so it's not blowing my way. Um, <laughs> um, you're going to adjust your heat to medium high, and then you bring the water up to full rolling boil before you start your timer. Then you're going to set your timer for the length of time stated in the recipe and maintain that full boil for the whole time it's processing. Now, um, that's important because that's they're bringing it up, the timing, and letting it cool down. Then you, is that on the next page? Mm -hmm. After processing, turn off the heat and um, let it cool for five minutes before you take them out of the jar. Now, I don't know if that's a new step for you, most of you or not, because um, when his mother taught me, we took them out right away. But um, you let them in there to cool down. Then you're going to place them, you're going to bring these jars straight up. 
You're going to bring the jar straight up. You're not going to tip on the tip of the water off. That water will evaporate. You're going to place them on a cooling rack or a towel. And I have, I have about five towels I use when I'm, I'm canning. Okay. Do not readjust the bands. Once you put them on their finger tight, you want to leave them that way. After they've set for 12 to 24 hours, you're going to test the top. <coughs> Can you hear? If it makes that noise, they aren't sealed. You can do one of two things. You can take and start the process again back down to putting your bands and seals back on. And then reprocess it. But if you're not doing another canner full or anything like that, <coughs> best thing is just to get in your refrigerator and use it right away. Once the seals are tested, you're going to carefully wash the jars, remove the bands, label, and um, with the product name and the processing date. And you think you're going to remember what date you did what, but you don't. <laughs> then you're going to store in a cool 70 or 50 to 70 degree area dry place for one year. Now, does that say? Okay, I can't, oh, it's my ears up. I can't use that product. Not really. What it says is that's the best for 18 months, a year to 18 months is what um, I've been told that you can use your product to. You don't want to leave it on your shelves for four or five, six years um, because you lose the, the value of the product. Um, once it's sealed, it's not going to use a go bad se until you get into like his mother when she, she went into a nursing home for 10 years before she passed away and when they cleaned out the house she still had corn and peaches and green beans in the basement well his brother decided he wanted those canning jars we said jimmy go at it we walked away he started opening those jars and he decided the dump truck was where they were going to go. <laughs> so yes, it will spoil after so many years. But if you use it within a year to 18 months, you're fine. Your product starts to decrease in the, the nutrition value and everything else after the 12 months. Okay. Any questions so far?
that because of, <coughs> excuse me, this is an induction cook where Tom, my, my pot did not work on that. So that's why we're not using the lantern. You're going to let them sit in there for a couple minutes until the skin just starts to peel away a little bit where she's made the eggs. And it takes maybe two, three, four, five minutes, depending on <coughs> how many tomatoes you have in there. Are there any questions so far? Or if you At what point do you cut off the, the crack part of the top of the tomato? After it comes out here. Okay. After it's good. Okay. Um, some of my sources that I've used over the years have been um, so easy to serve. This is the National Institution of Canning um, out of the University of Georgia. Uh, we do have, you want to get the sixth edition of this. The fifth edition is my, this one here, and there. Um, if you have the fifth edition, we have some of the updates um, for you, and it does affect your tomatoes. There are a couple recipes that are changed, um, and we have we have the sixth edition for twenty dollars. So if anybody's interested in that, we also have QT Extension one that's put out by the University of Tennessee. And this was um, a good just basic um, canning book. It gives you just the basics of it and that, um, and not very many recipes like that one has a whole lot more recipes in it, but also those into different. Um, freezing and, and things like that. Drying. And drying. Um, this one is five dollars. <coughs> so if you want to get started, get that one for five. I have always used in the past um, the blue the ball blue book. And this is the latest edition as of um, last year this came out at the end of the year. Um, and this is the 37th edition this. I have also the second or third edition and the recipes have really changed with the, the research and, and all that that has been going on so um, I don't use that. I use that for display. So. However, when I was looking at the ball to make sure I had the latest one, May 16th of 2016, um, Oxmoor House uh, for um, Jordan uh, Ball, which is the, who makes the, the jars and the candy books and that now, has come out with a brand new book. Um, and it is $22. And it has over 350 recipes and it also goes into the newer things that um, we've been teaching, such as um, kombucha, how to make kombucha tea and your fermented um, things in it. So um, I'm, I'm going to ask my kids to give me this for Christmas, maybe. So, up here on the table, if you are interested in getting, um, this is the information for food preservation resources. It's um, the National Center for um, Food Preservation, which is what canning is. Um, it gives you the website to go to. It has videos on there. It has, you can ask questions. They'll get back with you on that. Um, it's uh, food safety is uh, .gov is another website. Um, the, uh, does complete guide of home canning, um, which um, the complete guide of home canning is, is like this. Um, the ball fat brush, which I've already talked about. Presto is another good source. That's usually the pressure paint cook painters. That I don't usually recommend this something, and I know Carla probably kick me afterwards, but that's the one I use. The Presto. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. It, it is um, a lot sturdier than some of the other brands that I have seen on the market, and I, it, it's, it's been around for years. Um, Mrs. Wages is another place to get some recipes, and um, so if you want to pick up one of that, that's up here on the front table. Um, also, I, we put together a little book that will tell you step by step how to do hot water bath canning. So that now you can just follow step by step and make sure that you've done it. It won't be laughing. It'll be nice. Um, anything else? Are you ready? I am. All right. So she's just, she's topped it. 
and now she's just skinny. Step, 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 step. Yes. Yes, we uh, printed several publications yes. uh, at the end. If you, uh, yeah, okay. now after I skin this, where would you like me to put it? Directly put it on your, job? put it on your cutting, um, cutting board and cut it in quarters, please. So she shocked it. I was right. going to say she put it in Lengths. light size. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, in order to handle him. <laughs> yes. Okay. Another piece of equipment is long handle tongs because you can't always use the jar lifter to. And I knew these were ready to come out without a timer because you can see they split. See how the skin split? Easy. I'm telling you, if I can pan tomatoes, anyone can. And it is definitely worth it. Yes. In the wintertime, you're just hungry for tomato sauce or anything like that.
waiting for our water to heat up right now. And we have a coffee machine in the office if we need to make more coffee. I, I think we have enough. Um, each recipe um, processing time, um, you want to go by it. Um, I found out, and so I've got to go to the national thing. The new book says process the tomatoes for 45 minutes, and the others it says 30, or for 40 minutes rather, for 35. So I'm not sure if they've changed and added five more minutes or not. Um, do you know? So I'm going to have to go to the this, um, thing, and I'm, I'm sorry I didn't look that up before. I didn't realize that until I looked at my book this morning. That's why you need the most up to date. Yes. When you're canning salsas, a lot of you like um, salsas, um, be sure to use a, an approved recipe because you're mixing low acid and high acid um, vegetables together. So you want to be sure you use a recipe that's a current recipe for that. So we get the right mixture. All right, we've got boiling water. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to fill the jar to our um, half inch headspace. some of the things that, that go. All right. Half inch. And you're going to measure. Check me. Let me just change that. <laughs> now please put your lemon juice in there. Tablespoon. Uh, is it a tablespoon per pint? Yeah. I think it's a tablespoon per pint, yes. If you want to add your salt, you can. Um, we don't use salt anymore. Okay. Now the next thing she's going to do. Mm -hmm. All right. She's um, put the tomatoes in the jar. She's measured the lemon juice. Um, she's quartered and packed them in prepared jars. She's poured the hot water over. Now she's going to remove the air bubbles. I have a bubble. Do you see it? Probably. Can you take a picture of the tube on? No, I can hold it. Okay. <laughs> it's tiny. But the air bubbles will, will create a, um, will not create the seal correctly, and it could cause the bacteria and the mold and, and the yeast to, to grow. Yeah. So you want to make sure you get all the bubbles out and, and how you do that is you take your bubbler and you pull the product toward the center. Let me set it down. And you just work your way all the way around the jar. Green beans are a challenge with bubbles. Um, if you ever go to a county fair and you wonder how those items are placed, Look for bubbles, and uh, that's one of the things that judges look for when they're judging. And sometimes you have to go around a couple times to make sure they're all out. When you're making tomato juice, a lot of people complain because the water separates from the juice. And how to prevent some of that is you take and you um, peel a couple of tomatoes and you put them in your saucepan 
and you start heating them and crushing them, and then you keep adding to that so that they keep heating until um, they're all crusted until you get the full, full, and that will help with the separation problem. So, bubbles, check, check, all right. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take a um, white rim with a damp cloth. I use a paper towel. Either way. This makes a big difference. Yes. You could have the one you're in. The, you didn't use your phone, right? <laughs> But I don't put all the, the tomatoes like that either. <laughs> okay. Then you're going to position a single use lid on the jar. And that's the new one right there. And I use this. I like this toy. This is a lid lifter. Oh. Except it's upside down. And you don't have to go buy a fancy one. Oh, I totally like the fancy things. You can go to an automobile store and find one of those things that, that thing and, and that you reach behind the counters with or the cabinet tools or anything like that. I did see um, a seven-piece kit over at Tractor Supply for $19.99 and included um, a funnel, the jar lifter, one of these, a timer, um, something I don't have is a jar uh, opener, although Ball puts out now a jar sealer. Um, see, I don't have all the latest. <laughs> But my husband thinks I got way too much. <laughs> All right, you're gonna put the bake. Where the bake go? I have it in my hand. Okay. And then you're going to uh, screw the band on, finger tight. You don't want to crank it on because you won't be able to get it off. <laughs> All right. Then you're going to take your jar lifters. Not stay with it. <laughs> So you're going to lift it up and you're going to put it in there. Then you're going to fill all the rest of your jars for your can. Okay. Then you're going to lower. Yes. <laughs> lower it down into your boiling water. And then you're going to put the lid on. Bring it back up to full rolling boil. That's when you're going to set your timer for the, um, well, we're going to go by the, it's so easy to preserve them right now, the um, 35 minutes. And while y'all wait for 35 minutes, Pam will now lead us in song. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, you're not? Oh. <laughs> I didn't Next write. week. <laughs> Our time is up. All right. <laughs> or we could just do that. <laughs> All right. So then we're going to take our lid off and we're going to leave it set for five minutes. Five more minutes. Oh, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're going to lift the jar out and you're going to want to place it in um, on a towel or on a cooling rack so that that thermal shock doesn't do it again, and you're going to want to place it out of um, a draft. I had a friend that called me, and she says, I lost 15 or 14 jars of green beans. About half of them cracked, and the other ones didn't seal. I said, what did you do? She says, well, I put them in the window to cool faster. <laughs> I said, well, that's your mistake right there. So, but it is the thermal heat transfer, so you don't want to put it on a cold countertop. Um, you want to have something to it. And um, because it's not boiling, there is water sitting on top of there. But um, so oh, actually, it's actually, actually, not actually, it's it's actually it is evaporating. It is, must be hot enough. All right, it's set 24 hours now. So you're going to check it to see if it's sealed. Just because something is sealed doesn't mean it's preserved. By the way, I just thought I'd throw that in. I get a lot of calls, but it's sealed. But that doesn't, if you didn't process it the correct amount of time, it's not preserved. So your jellies are a good example of that. A lot of the times the lid will seal before you put it in the water. Okay. But you still process yes. it in five minutes. Just can't find it. Sorry. I didn't mean to go off the script. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's it.
That's uh, and, and you have our club. And now, and now afterwards, you take your um, you'll take a fish rag and you'll gently wipe off the jar because you don't want any of the sediment sitting there. You know, if you put them out in your storage bin, you don't want mice coming into that. You label it. You take the ring off. Now, why would you take the ring off? Use it so it don't rust. That's one reason. Use it again. 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 So you don't have to pass it. Also, if it goes bad, the flat just can pop and you can tell. When I go to, um, I give a lot of my canning stuff away. I'll put the ring back on though to transport it. Yeah. If you're entering in an affair, you should put the ring on. Exactly. Also, if you're entering in an affair, don't bring the rest to the fair. Just don't bring the rest. The older rings, the, the, um, as, as they start to rust in that, um, go ahead and throw them out, or you can put them together and make a nice little pumpkin by tying them together and spray painting it with with, um, with orange, and then you can make a cute little uh, decoration. Replace them with the new lids. These are EPA um, fruit. The new ones are, um, which so I mean, I've basically gotten all my my old ones out and then used them the EPA fruit. Um, when you're canning for a fair, I see. And is that preserved? No, it is not. No, it's not. But it's it's it, 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 it check the seal didn't work. Okay. See the word fall here? Okay. A lot of them have a name on there of what you're using. I use fall. I just that's all I've ever used with fall. Um, I've had trouble with some of the other brands, the off brands. So see the word ball here. The judges will look to see if you lined up the word ball with the word ball. Oh, sure. Those are just little bitty I mean, if it comes it's down to it, affair. Yeah, if sure. you're doing it at home for your own purpose, it doesn't matter. It's all about the product and the color and all that. And, and that should be in so. class next year. Put that on here. Class next year. What are they looking for when judging? Just Have you got a list of that? Uh, for for? Yes. Mm -hmm. a week. Yeah, we did, but we didn't print it because I didn't. Oh, print. right. Yeah, that's a whole book. Yeah, <laughs> on, on what to look for on, on fairs and stuff. So, okay. Any any questions? Because I could talk all day on yeah. <laughs> Get into jams and jellies and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> got a quick question. When you're storing these and you take the the ring off, off. <laughs> can you stack them? Can you stack? I never have. I've been afraid. I've, I've been afraid the jar will no. fall over. <laughs> break. I would not stack because um, it's all about keeping that seal. And if you're stacking, then you're putting weight on it, and it's not designed to hold weight. So, no, do not stack. Good question. Do you stack? Oh. So how's that working for you? Fine. Yeah. To each his own. And it's yours. But as long as they're not. But when I do, but when I do mine, I've got a like a cardboard in between it okay. on there you because like because I have very little cabinet space and right. when right. I I do my canner holds seven at a time. So when I do the seven, I've got like a little cardboard type thing it's about right. that thick, and I put that on top, and then I put them on there again. But it's after the twenty-four hours, so. Okay. Now, what I might recommend, what I might recommend to you then is take your bands off, wipe your jars, clean your bands, and leave the bands on. I do. And then stack them. I do. Yeah. If you, because that card, that will raise just enough. I do. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I have very little cabinet space not to stack. Right. I hear you. I can't say as an agent that we recommend stacking. Right. But you know what works for you. Works for me. <laughs> but, I'll leave the, but I'll leave the bands on too. Okay. And again, that's kind of a personal preference. Too, leave the bands on. I, would, I leave my bands on. I just like to look at them. They just look better. Yeah. That's, no, that's what I But I, I take them off and clean them. They just look so they don't rust. So, and then you put these little decorative little uh, things on top and tie it with a bow and there you go. There you go. Yes. So, 
Um, I went back to this this particular screen because your pressure canners, and I don't know if I brought this out before. There is a difference between a pressure cooker and a pressure can. What the guideline has, I, I read in um, is you have to be able to put four quart jars half inch apart, or so half inch apart, so that the air it, to be classified as a can. So if you're cooking with a smaller one and your pipes in that fit in there, it's still not recommended to do it because the canners are heavier gauge aluminum cans. They have the safety features for canning. They would stand the heat that's needed for canning. So I'll be sure it's a canner and not the cooker that you're using. Um, so um, the other thing that we get asked a lot about is glass top, um, the smooth top. Oh, right. Um, Which I have one now and I love it. I'm an induction cook top. Pros and cons, people. Pros if you have cons. one, our recommendation is to check with your manufacturer. There are some cook tops that uh, glass cook tops that say do not use, do not can. And what, um, what can kind of happen is because the heat is so flat, it will actually bond to your so you, you want to, you don't want to lose your cook top and the um, That's one one of the reasons. But there's an information up here on the cook top. I have induction and I, it manufactures a can can on it, and I did. My my issue was, and it addresses this, is that it shuts off because it's such high heat for such a long period of time. You have to stand over it to make sure it doesn't shut off. Because if it shuts off, I can turn it right back on because of induction. But that is something you have to, to watch out for. Uh, we appreciate you all coming. We have several resources and handouts uh, for you here. And I know Mrs. Jackson in the back has a door prize. If you have a ticket, if you do not have a ticket, let her know. We will stay after if you have any questions. Um, and we have four door prizes. Yeah. Right? All right. So okay. you, does everyone have a ticket for the door prize? Okay. First of all, we have a T-shirt. So let's pull for the T-shirt.